Now, I want you to understand something about these statistics that I went through. You have to understand where these statistics came from. All right? Where, where did they come from? How did we get to a point as a nation where 68% of Americans say divorce is morally acceptable? It's nothing wrong with it. You'd think people could just look around at the children that suffer. You'd think people would just look at the dysfunctional family system that is born out of divorce, okay, and realize this is not right. How did we get to a point where 60% of Americans say having a baby outside of marriage is morally acceptable? How did we get to that point as a nation? We have not always been like this. If you could go back 100 years ago or even 50 years ago, you would see a different society. But these numbers are going up. How did we come to a point as a nation where 59% of Americans say gay and lesbian sexual relationships are morally acceptable? How did we come to this as a nation? Again, if you went back 50 or 60 years ago, you wouldn't see this. How did we come to a point where 63% of Americans say sex between unmarried men and women is morally acceptable? Well, let me tell you where it comes from. It comes from the teaching that we are freed by God's grace from the necessity of obeying God's law. And guess where you learned that at? You learned that at church. And that's why God comes along and says, look, come out of her, my people that you be not partakers of her sins. There may come a time when you need to find a different church because your church is no different than the world. And this is just a reality. I mean, we need to face this reality. Now, I know if you ask people in church, you see, church is a, it's an elusive environment. Everybody puts on their best clothing and they look their best and they present their best. So you're not going to have a lot of honesty there about what people truly believe. Sometimes you can just tell by their actions what they believe, but these statistics is how you identify a worldly church. 2 John 1 and verse 10 says, If there come in any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that bids him God speed is a partaker of, of his evil deeds. Now, I want to explain this, what this is talking about. Let me read it from a different translation. If anyone shows up and doesn't hold to this teaching, don't invite him in and give him the run of the place. In other words, that would just give him a platform to perpetuate his evil ways, making you his partner. Now, here's the thing. Maybe you as an individual you don't believe divorce is morally acceptable. Maybe you as an individual, you don't believe having a baby outside a, moral, a marriage is morally acceptable. Maybe you as an individual, you don't believe gay and lesbian sexual relationships are morally acceptable. Maybe you as an individual, you don't believe sex between unmarried men and women is morally acceptable. But you're friends with a lot of people who do. And a lot of those friends are in your church. And this verse says, For he that bids him Godspeed is partakers of his evil deed. In other words, if you just go along with it and you just, you know, well, I know you, you don't have the same conviction I, I, I have, but we're both friends. This verse says don't even bid him Godspeed. People that don't share the same conviction. You know, what I'm saying is that in a church, people should share the same conviction. I'm not saying everybody got to believe the same thing. But if we can't agree on the basics, if we can't agree on the Ten Commandments, if, if we can't come along and say, no, I mean, I, I think having a baby outside of marriage, you know, that, that, that that's a bad thing. I think two people should be committed for life to one another. If we can't stand up as a church and say, well, look, no, I think gay and lesbian, lesbian sexual relationships are wrong. If we can't do that, if we can't come to some type of consensus and say, as a church, these things are wrong, then, then why do we even, well, 
Why do we even go to church? Is it just a support group where everybody can have their own conviction, their own ideas about right and wrong? Is there no standard of morality in your church? 